Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to massively thank you for a time spent in your presence. Father, thank you for an awesome time spent in your presence. Father, we bless your name. We give you all the glory and we give you all of the honor. Thank you, Lord, for being a magnificent God. Thank you for not leaving us to wander alone. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for always being there with us. Thank you for being the lover of our soul and the lifter up of our head. Lord, we worship you. We adore you. We magnify your name. As we look at your word this morning, we ask, O oh God, that you would have your way and you will bless us richly. Nobody will go back home the same way they came. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Your hallelujah must be born again. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. What an awesome time of worship in God's house. My goodness. God is in our midst. And let somebody shout hallelujah for that. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Today's topic is woman thou art loosed. Amen. Woman thou art loosed. Gentlemen, don't worry. It applies to you. Child of God, thou art loosed. But the story is the story of a woman in the scripture. But it applies to everybody because the woman's name was not mentioned. And even if her name was mentioned, it applies to everybody, young, old, young, old. It applies to us all. And today we're going to be taking our text from Luke 13, 10 to 17. Luke 13, 10 to 17. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And he beheld there, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore come ye and be healed, and not on Sunday. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from his bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries and all, all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. How many of us have read this story? Strange, very strange story. Jesus comes to church on a Sunday and people gather. You know, he's teaching. He's teaching and then he does a miracle and heals somebody. And someone says, no, not on Sunday. Ah, why? Guys, if you want to receive healing, come Monday to Saturday, whichever day it was. Don't come on Sunday and, 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 and come, on. come on the other days. Isn't that madness? Does that even make any sense? What better time to even receive from the Lord? Now, there are a few things God has laid on my heart that I want to share with us this morning from this text. And my prayer is that you will at least hold on to one of them that will transform your life 
and bless your life. Now, the first thing that God laid on my heart was, not everybody is interested in your recovery. That is breaking news. Just in case you thought that everybody was interested in your recovery, it's a lie. If you're expecting everybody to be happy when God blesses you, it's a lie. If you're expecting everybody around you to be happy when God delivers you, it is a lie. Not everybody is interested in your recovery. In fact, some people are making a living out of your misery. In fact, some people feel happy when you have issues because they have issues and they feel comfortable with you when you have issues so that when you are together, they don't feel awkward. You understand? So maybe they are jobless. And you, you're always talking about going to work, coming back tired. So the day you announce to them that you don't have a job, they are smiling. Hey, don't worry. You know, you understand what I have been going through now. Uh uh-uh. uh. Not everybody wants your recovery, not everybody wants you to be blessed. In fact, some people enjoy giving out handouts when you knock on their door and say, Sis, bro, can you, can you lend me or give me 100 pounds? They are happy, they are excited, they like, they feel a buzz out of helping you when you are in need, but they don't want your recovery. Not everybody is like Peter, who wants to give you rise up and walk. Remember what we said last Sunday? Not everybody wants to give you rise up and walk. Some people just want to give you the silver and the gold, and then next week, what do you do? You come back for more silver and gold. Not everybody is interested in your recovery. Now, this is what God laid on my heart, and I'll read my notes. Some companies have made so much fortune out of this pandemic, for instance. Look at all of us now. What is this? We have face masks. So the people that have produced, mass producing face masks, I don't think they are praying for COVID-19 to go. Hand sanitizers, they have mass produced those ones. Trust me, they are not praying for the virus to go anytime soon because they are making pocket loads. The people who are creating the vaccines, whether it is vaccine one, two, three, and I'm not saying these things are bad, I am saying they are good things, but I'm saying that these people are not particularly praying for the recovery of anything because it's making good money for them. It's just an example. You know, so the vaccine is good, the max is good, the hands and dozens are good, but there's some people who are making a mass fortune out of it, and they're not praying for anything to go anywhere fast. That's just an example. The undertaker, let me tell you his prayer point. Lord, please don't let any more people die. Do you think that is correct? Of course not. Because if nobody dies, the undertaker has no business. The undertaker is somebody who buries dead people. So what do you think his prayer is going to be? God, please, this week, eh? <laughs> Let there be at least a few dead people. Even if he doesn't vocalize it, he's saying it. And do you think he's just praying, God, let it just be the old people that come? No, it doesn't matter to his business. Whether it is old, whether it is young, whether it is not going away nicely in their sleep, or whether it is car accident or plane crash, his business is booming. Not everybody is interested in your recovery. Tell your neighbor, say not everybody is interested in your recovery. And I'm saying that so that you you know how to comport yourself and who to tell your stories to. Because some people are actually, "Eh, now she knows what I have been going through. Eh, eh, Now he knows what I have been, he knows what has been pinching me. Eh, But I even feel it. Not everybody is praying for your recovery. That is breaking news. Now, let me read a text to us. Genesis 30, 29, 26 to 27. I pray I finish this this week. If not, we will carry on next week. Um, but I pray I do. Genesis 30, 26 to 27. This is a really strange story. Now, Jacob goes to his um, father-in-law, and this is what he says. He says, give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. 27. Shocking. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake. Now, let me put it in my own words. Jacob said, I want to go and be my own man. I have served you. I have, you have, I have been slaved away in this place for so long. 
Free me. Let me go and be a old man, my own, my, my own man. So I can look after my own family, set up my own family. And Laban said, I have learned from experience that your staying here is a blessing to me. So I don't want you to go. They call those people frenemies. Has anybody ever heard the word frenemies? A, an enemy who is pretending to be a friend. He says, I want you to stay here. The man is saying, my staying here is making me uncomfortable. My staying here means I am retarded. I am not making progress. And you say, please stay here because, because you are here. God is blessing me because of you. Ah, God will separate you from all those frenemies Amen. in the name of Jesus. Ah, your amen is not even born again. Amen. I hope you know what it meant. Jacob slaved away for 20 years. And this man says, still stay. Ah, such frenemies, God will separate you from them amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Unbelievable. Now, the second thing I wanted to pull out out of the text we have read today. God does not need human approval before he blesses you. Can you imagine if Jesus went to the ruler of the synagogue and said, should we deliver this woman? What do you think he would have said? No, Lord, let her suffer for one more day. Because today is Sunday. Ah, you know, today is Sunday. Let her just stay there. She can come back another day and receive healing. Can you imagine? But thank God, God does not consult with anybody. He does not need approval from anybody before he blesses you before he releases you from whatever bondage or challenge. He doesn't need any human approval. And I'm grateful to God that he doesn't. I'm grateful to God that he doesn't. I don't know how anybody can say delivering somebody on the Sabbath day is a wrong thing. Do you know, in fact, as a matter of fact, every time we hear the word of God, do you know that deliverance is taking place? As I'm speaking to you now, you're being delivered. So deliverance is standard. So how anybody in their right frame of mind can be incensed against a child of God being delivered on a Sabbath is it, unbelievable. Other than to say that that person is very, very devilish. And God will separate each one of us Amen. from such devilish people. Amen. God does not need their approval. God gave me an example. Two examples, actually. One Mordecai and one Daniel. God does not need the approval of anybody before he wants to bless you. And this account really, really encourages my heart. Esther 6, 1 to 3. Esther 6, 1 to 3. This is an account of Mordecai. But one night the king could not sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And when they were read before the king, and it was found that Mordecai had told of Bigtana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlain, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, what honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. Two people wanted to assassinate the king. Mordecai found out about it and reported it, and those two people were dealt with, and the life of the king was spared. You would think that somebody would celebrate this guy and give him some sort of reward. But they didn't reward him. In fact, somebody else was rewarded. But a day came when God had decided that his labor is going to be rewarded. And that day is going to come for you too. Amen. That all your labor, that you have labored and you are wondering, God, did nobody see it? Eh? How come? Where is my reward? God is going to disturb somebody's sleep. Amen. They are going to open up the record. They are going to see what you have done. And they are going to ask, what reward was given? When they say nothing was given, they are going to ask a next question. Praise the name of the Lord. When God decides to help a man, he will make the helper of the destiny of that man restless. Let's read verse 6 to 9 of that same chapter. Esther 6. I am going somewhere with this. God does not need any human approval before he blesses you. And I hope that that brings good news to somebody. So Haman, verse 6, so Haman came in. This is the enemy of the Jew who had planned that the Jews were going to be annihilated, wiped out completely. So Haman came in and the king said unto him, what shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom 
Will the king delight to honor more than myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon the head, upon his head, and let his apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man with all whom the king delighted to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Thank God for the wisdom that God gave the king. He said, who, what shall be done to the man the king delighted? I am very happy he didn't ask Haman, what can we do for Mordecai? What do you think Haman would have said? Ah, kill him, slay him, you know, banish him, don't, don't reward him. But God hid the name of Mordecai when the king was asking that question. And Haman gave the best kind of reward you can imagine, only to discover that it wasn't actually him the king was talking about. I said that to say this, brethren, watch me, everybody. When God lays on your heart to bless somebody, to help somebody, please do not consult with somebody else. Do not. Because what is going to happen is, so say for this, as they've said, bless you. And I said to them, ah, you know, God has asked me to bless. Ah, no, are you sure you heard God rightly? Ah, no, she doesn't need it. Ah, or that woman, ah, she's not a nice woman, no. You know, she's just pretending. By the time they finish with you, you won't even know where you're coming or going. So can I appeal to us, if God is prompting you to bless somebody, to help somebody, to assist somebody, to do something for somebody, please, you do not need to consult with any human being. The same way God does not consult with any human being to bless you. You see, God bypassed Haman. He went straight to the king and said, bless Mordecai. And I thank God at the end of the day, Mordecai was, in fact, he was so richly celebrated. Your season of celebration is coming in the name of Jesus. Your help of destiny will not stop until they have located you. Remember the topic, woman, thou art loosed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at Esther 6, 10, the next verse, verse 10. Then the king said to Haman, make haste and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do so. To Mordecai. Where are the Mordecai in the house? Ah, well, mention your name. Do so to Lola Ezra. Eh? Do so to Lola Ezra. Look at the end of that statement. It says, let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Don't change your mind now because now you know it's Mordecai. No, 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 no. Every single thing you have said, this man needs to get. Make sure each one of those things is done for Mordecai. I declare over your life, Every plan of God for your life will come to pass. All those that are going to make sure it happens, they are not going to stop. They are not going to rest until each one of those things happens in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. God has an excellent sense of humor. The next example I am going to give is that of Daniel. Remember I said if God is prompting you to do something, please, what did I say you should do? Fem, fem, fem. You fem it like that because once you start to broadcast it, and that's what happened in this story I'm going to share. Daniel 6, 3 to 4. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the president, can you imagine, the thing was thinking it. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion to fault him. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault in him. We are told that the king was planning to promote Daniel above the presidents and the princes. He must have hinted to somebody. Because there's no way the presidents and the princes would know what the king was thinking unless he had opened his mouth and told somebody. And you know how that story ended. 
how they try to sabotage the whole thing. Brethren, when God is prompting you to do something, you just go ahead and you do it. You don't need any human opinion. Praise the name of the Lord. So we can see the clear difference between what happened to Mordecai and what happened to Daniel. Daniel eventually got promoted, but it, you cannot compare that experience to Mordecai. Mordecai straight, Daniel had to go round, 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 have a little taste of the lion's den, you know, before eventually God elevated him. Hallelujah. So God does not need any human approval. The third thing I want to take out of the text we read regarding women that were loose, when God is ready to heal a man, he will disrupt all human protocol. I pray that God will disrupt protocol for your sake. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know what the issue with the ruler of the synagogue was. Maybe he had planned the service. You know how we do service in church. So this morning, there was a little bit of disruption. We went over by like 15, 20 minutes, you know, because the Holy Spirit was just taking over and there was a huge atmosphere of worship and we were enjoying the presence of God. Now, that's what happened on that day. Jesus Christ comes in, he starts to teach the word, you know, and he's teaching the word, and the ruler of the synagogue is expecting you teach, you know, you know, service, opening prayer, praise worship, Sunday school, sermon, closing prayer, offering and tithes, um, exit the building. That's what the uh, ruler of the synagogue was expecting. But because there was a woman in the house whose case was too urgent for protocol, Jesus had to disrupt the whole service and give that woman attention. The Bible said when he was teaching, he noticed the woman. He observed the woman. He noticed the woman. He observed the woman. And guess what happened? He looked at her case and decided... Everyone... So Jesus disrupted the service for your sake. How many people are excited? Jesus will break protocol for your sake. Amen. Jesus will break human protocol Amen. for your sake because he wants to deliver you. How can Jesus walk into a place, be sharing the word, and see people who are in bondage and go, no. He came and he made sure nobody left the same way they came. And my prayer, my prayer, my prayer for each one of us is that God will disrupt protocol Amen. in your favor in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. God will disrupt. In fact, bow down your heads and pray that prayer and say, Father, every man made protocol. Father, disturb it for my sake. Every man made protocol that will stand in the way of my healing, that will stand in the way of my deliverance. Father, Father, today, Father, break that protocol. Break that protocol. People were screaming. They were shouting. They were jumping. They were leaping because a soul was delivered. Protocol was broken, but the soul was delivered. You are going to say, Father, every man made protocol that will hinder me, O oh God, from receiving my deliverance. Break it today, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The fourth thing I wanted to say, when God steps in, all opposition is silenced. Remember how after Haman decorated Mordecai, you know what the Bible said? He said he hung his head in shame. In fact, he went back home to his wife and his friends. They said, ah, your downfall has started today. Esther 6, 12 to 13. You can read that in your own time. And then there's with the story that we read about women that were loose, if you look at verse 17 of Luke 13, verse 17 of Luke 13, he says, and when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the, pe for, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done. Jesus said, you guys, you own animals, don't you? On Sunday, on the Sabbath, and your, your animal is thirsty. Don't you lose your animal? Don't you untie your animal so that your animal can go and drink water? What is wrong with God untying this woman 
Can you imagine? This woman has been like this 18 years. How many people have seen people like that? Some you've seen some yeah. and some elderly people with a hunchback, and it's almost impossible for them to move. And one woman has been like that for 18 years, and God delivers them. God delivers her, and somebody is angry. Ah, please bow your heads and say, Father, all those frenemies in my life, Father, silence them today. As you silence these people, Father, all those who were in opposition to the deliverance that this woman got, Father, such people in my life, Lord, silence them in Jesus' name. Make them to hang their head in shame. All those who are happy for me to be in bondage, all those who are happy for me to be in trouble or one calamity or the other, Jehovah God, I pray today in the name of Jesus, you will permanently silence them and put them to shame. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hmm. When Jesus commands, this is the fifth thing he wants me to share with us this morning. When Jesus commands, yeah, his word will birth a change. To the woman, he said, woman, thou art loosed, and she was loosed. To the storm, he said, peace be still. And what happened? The Bible said there was a great calm. To Pharaoh, he said, let my people go. What happened? The people of God were released. To Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. A man who had been dead for four days was released back to life. To a, a, a young disciple named Tabitha, he said, Tabitha, rise. And Tabitha came back to life. Praise the name of the Lord. And now, the issue of Tabitha, I want to say this to us. Jesus wasn't the one that directly spoke. He spoke through the mouth of Peter to Tabitha and said, Tabitha, arise. What, what do I mean by that? God can speak through your mouth. Because you are a carrier of the Lord Jesus. He can speak through your mouth in the name of Jesus. So you are going to declare, peace be still to every storm in your life. Lift up your voices this morning. Please be still to every storm, every storm in your marriage. I declare over your life, peace be still to every storm in your finances, to every storm in your mind, to every storm in your home, to every storm in your body. I declare, peace be still. The word of God says, woman, thou art loose. I declare to everyone under the sound of my voice, you are loose in the name of Jesus. You are loose in the name of Jesus. I declare, arise in the name of Jesus. Us. Arise from affliction, arise from sickness, arise from bondage, arise from trouble in the name of Jesus. I declare it over your life. Hear the word of God. Arise in the name of Jesus. Arise and do exploits for God. Arise and take your place in life and in destiny. Arise and do great exploits for God. Arise and be head and not tail. Arise and be above and not beneath. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Your season of stagnation is over. Amen. God gave me this specific word. Now, this month has been interesting so far. Those of you who were here on the very first Sunday, I did not mention this scripture. I said, God, you have given unto us the theme for this month, divine compensation. God said, this is what you are going to talk about. You are loosed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The sixth thing I want to say, one contact with Jesus, just one, is all it takes. One contact. And God gave me two songs to share with you this morning. One says, you won't leave here as you came, in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, seek or lay, for the Holy Ghost of arts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Amen. And then all of us, we're going to sing this song with me. Touch me today. Touch me today, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, touch me today. Lift your hands to him, say, touch me today. Let me hear you sing it. Touch me today. Heavenly Heavenly Father, oh, touch me today. Touch me, Lord. Touch me today. 
touch me, Lord, touch me today. Heavenly Father, touch me to now say, deliver me, deliver me today. Help me today, help me today, transform me. Heavenly Father, transform me, transform me today. Help me today, help me today. Help me today, help me today. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, help me today. I want you to go before him and say, Father, help me today. Help me today. Heavenly Father, help me today. Help me today. Help me today. Bread, bread, ask God. Say, Father, I need your help. I need your help. The Bible says this woman has been in bondage for 18 years. Brethren, can I appeal to you? Please do not get used to the bondage. Please do not get used to the sickness. Please do not get used to the retardation or stagnation. Ask God, help me today. Touch me. All that was required was one single touch. One word, one contact from Jesus. The storm became a calm. Touch me, O oh God. Deliver us, O oh God. Touch everyone under the sound of my word. Touch us, O oh God. 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 Touch each one of us, O oh God. Touch us, Father. Touch us, Holy Spirit. We need your divine touch. Touch us, O oh God. You said, woman, thou art loose. Woman, thou art loose. Child of God, you are loose. You are loose from bondage. You are loose your bondage. You are loose from affliction. You are loose from sickness. You are loose from disease. You are loose from poverty. You are loose from fruitlessness. You are loose from barrenness. You are loose from frustration. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Woman, thou art loose. Ah, child of God, you are loose in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. One final thing I wanted to mention in this passage. It doesn't matter how long the challenge is. No issue, no long-standing challenge or issue is a match for Jesus. No. This woman was in that case for how long? 18 years. But that 18 years could not stop Jesus. Rise up to your feet. It could not touch Jesus. The Bible says in an instant, those 18 years of waiting is over. Ah. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father, my wait is over. over. Now tell God, say, God, I don't know what you're waiting for, brother, this morning. Say, my wait is over. It's over now. It's over now. I feel like I can make it. The wait is over now. It's over now. It's over now. I feel like I can make it. The pain is over now. It's over now. It's over now. I feel like I can make it. The wait is over now. Say, Father, my waiting is over. My waiting is over. My waiting is over. Say, Father, I receive help. I receive help. I receive help. I receive help. Brethren, if someone is willing to help you, you have to be willing to receive it, to be able to say, I'm help. Say, Father, I receive help. I receive help. I receive help. In the name of Jesus, I receive help. Say, Lord, I am delivered. I am delivered. The wait is over. 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 Over. The pain is over. The shame is over. The reproach is over. The delay is over. The bondage is over. The sickness is over. The disease is over. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's over now. It's over now. I feel like.
like I can make it. The wait is over. The wait is over. The pain is over. Man, shikende. Say, Lord, I know I will make it. I know I will make it. I know I will triumph. I know I will excel. I know I will be elevated. The wait is over. The wait is over. I am loosed. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your two hands like a child who wants to be lifted up. Everybody in the house, on the platform, lift up your hands to the Lord. Father, this is our sign of surrender. You gave us this topic, woman, thou art loosed. And you reminded us of the story of this woman. Looking at the text, the woman just came to service to listen to the word. And the word saw her and ministered to her. Father, we have even gone beyond what this woman had done. She just listened. But Daddy, we have listened and we are asking in faith. that Daddy, how you deliver this woman. How you shut up the mouth of all opposition. How you broke protocol. How one singular touch, oh God, one contact from you made a difference. How one one pronouncement for you made a difference. Father, do so for us and more today in the name of Jesus. That we will record that on the 15th, I believe today is the 15th or 16th, 15th. On the 15th day of January, we came to the Lord. On the 16th day of January, we came to the Lord. And God ministered deliverance to us. We want that to be our testimony, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I don't know what these hands represent. Some of these hands may be, oh God, deliver me from poverty. Oh God, fight my marital battle, fight my health battles, fight my financial battles, fight my debt battles, fight my confusion battles. I don't know what these hands represent, but whatever these hands represent, you the same God that ministered to that woman who had infirmity for 18 years, minister to every need that these hands represent, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, convert all these needs to testimonies, Lord, in Jesus' name. We are waiting upon you. We are still waiting, oh God. Father, Lord, we ask, oh God, you said some things cannot go out, but by prayer and fasting. Lord, we have been fasting. Certain things that have held us bound for years. Lord, let us be released, oh God. Today, oh God, forever in Jesus' name. Father, this woman was released. Father, we declare a release, oh God, to each one of us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. You're a good, good father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the woman, the man, the child that knows they have been delivered shout a resounding hallelujah. Praise God.